Welcome back to Finnegan's Garage. This time we're talking plumbing because in episode 22, you watched my buddies and I thrash to get this drag boat ready for the SEMA show, but you didn't see a lot of the hard work that happened here at Holly. This time we're gonna find out, well, why there's five different kinds of hoses on my boat engine. I don't know. Get your hands off my boat. Get your hands off my hose. This is gonna go well, I can tell. All right, school me. All I've right. never done this before. I've never crimped hoses together, except that one time in Indy, but we won't talk about that. We don't talk about that one. <laughs> so basically, so, so far what we've done, we've assembled one end and I'll show you how to do the other. So what you'll do is, first of all, you'll kind of mock up your hose. You'll mark it where it needs to be marked and then you'll cut it. What you want to use it to cut it with is, we use one of these. Um, Nobody has that at home, so right, it's one death more... wheel. <laughs> death wheel, so what you want to do is you can use a, uh, like a bandsaw or something okay. to cut it, but you don't want to use something that chops. You don't want to use any kind of scissor type because what that's going to do is I got to crush the PTFE on the inside. Okay, so, well, so let's talk about that hose because that's different than everything I've ever used. So right. that looks like you've got that old convoluted tubing in there that you cover your stereo wires with, but, right. but that's not it, right? No, so what that is, is that is a PTFE core hose that's carbon lined on the outside. It's stainless. So you can also get in polyester. Um, and what that allows it to do is it can basically handle a very large array of fluids, anything from regular pump gas to, you know, your E85s. Um, motor oil, I'm guessing? Hmm? Motor oil? I'm motor guessing. oil, yeah. Motor oil, transmission fluid, rear differential fluid, all that stuff. It So far, it's been impervious to everything we've run through it. We haven't had any issues. Okay, so this is the do-it-all hose. Right, water, awesome. water too? Your water too, yeah. Um, only the thing is with water, depending on what kind you're running, the hose ends will eventually, you know, if you're in a corrosive environment like salt water um, or, you know, something like that, it eventually will corrode the hose ends. But we are expanding the brand all the time. So we will eventually have stainless steel. Okay. So ditch the aluminum ends if you're running water through it and just run stainless. Mm -hmm. okay. And then it's carbon lines. So, you know, your tr traditional hoses that don't have carbon, eventually when there's fluid running through a hose, you're going to create electrical charge. And eventually, if you if it you know hits something metal, it'll discharge and it'll create little small pin-sized holes in it. And over time, it will leak. This one is carbon lined, so you don't have to worry about that. Ah, I did not know that. All right. And is this the reusable kind? You can use crimp fittings. Or... Uh, that is the crimp kind. The reusable kind we have is over here, and that is your twist-on type. But this, it's the same hose. You can same crimp hose. it or reuse. Okay, that's right, cool. Right. So this, and what do you call this again? That is Ultra Pro. Okay, so Ultra Pro, that's it. That's Pro. the end all be all of hose. Any fluid, you can crimp it, you can thread it together. That's as close as we've gotten so far to the one hose does it all. Perfection. Yes, sir. All right. All right, so well, we'll uh, go ahead and I'll show you how to put this one together. So, so far, like I said, we've cut it. The next step you wanna do is you wanna take your crimp collar and you wanna put it, make sure that the chamfered edge right here is facing out. You know, just turn it, pull it back, watch out for the braids, you don't cut yourself. After we do that, we'll want to get our hose expander. I'll put it in here real quick. The reason why I want to expand the hose is anything over dash eight. So your six and eight, you can get away with not expanding it. But when you go to 10, 12, 16, or 20, you want to expand it simply for the ease of assembly. And also what that does, it kind of flattens out the ribs on the inside okay. and helps it seal a little bit better. Right, the smaller so, sizes don't require it, yeah. but the larger ones do. But in the smaller hoses, I, a lot of times I've used just an awl in the end of it or a screwdriver to expand it just to get it together. Uh, the, the only thing with that is with this, if you use a screwdriver, the tip can actually penetrate through the PTFE right. and then you can cause a leak. Well, if you're spending money on Dash 20 hose, you could probably afford this tool. Yeah, it's not too bad. And then it'll, it'll save you headaches in the long run, that's for sure. Okay. So, all right. so what do you call this? Like a guy goes on your website, what does he call this? What is he looking for? That would be the Earl's uh, hose expander. Okay. That's all we call it. Cool. Yes, you need to make this for exhaust tubing. Yeah. Just saying. Well, that's basically what it is. It's pretty close to it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's for like a Honda. So man, man sized exhaust tubing is what I'm go. saying. Oh, all right. So what we'll do now is we'll take it and we would just basically put it in here and you just pull the handle. You want to rotate it about 90 degrees, three times. Oh, you can see it working to make sure it's a good expansion. Okay. And then you kind of look, it's a little bit larger than it used to be. So now we'll take this part off. And this is our monster fitting. That's right, so that's a 90, we did the straight earlier, we'll do the 90 degree this time. 
If you had two angle fittings, mm -hmm. so let's say you had a 45 and a 90, you'd have to clock the hose. So you'd have to pre-assemble it, mark a line on the hose and, and the hose, that way you know how to orientate it. These don't swivel then? No, sir, those do not swivel. But since we're using a straight on one end, we don't gotta worry about that. So now we'll put these aluminum um, soft jaws in there just to simply keep our fitting from getting marred up. I like that you care about how it's gonna turn out. Well, you know, we, we wanna have the best quality. Appreciate that. You're welcome. So that goes there. There's plenty of other scratches in that boat without uh, <laughs> screwing up the plumbing too. Well, hey, you know, we'll try to keep that at a minimum. And you put it in here and you just give it a nice tight. So now after that is in there, we get a little assembly lube and we put it on the barb here and we just kind of rub that in. So what we'll do is we'll take it and we'll just push and turn. What I do is I pull, try to pull the braid back a little bit to see where our inner liner is. And that's kind of one of the tricks is, you know, once we had it pushed up all the way, we look like we're butted up against, but we're actually oh, not. So I like to pull it back, pull that braid back and just keep working it until that inner liner is all the way up against that back wall right here. Okay. And do you leave the tape on there or is that kind of uh, You do for now. Once we get it butted up, then we'll take the tape off. Okay. All right, so now if we look, aside from the bleeding I'm doing, so right there, we're butted up against the wall there. So next step is we'll just take our tape off. And we'll push our braid forward right as it's in line with that inner liner. And we'll take our collar, push it forward, and that's all there is to it. So now the hose is assembled and then we'll go over here to crimp it. Oh yeah, so it's about 3,800. Oh, Whatever. is that all? That's it. Okay. It's not that bad. Come on. So with it, with a 38, you'll get the machine and you'll get all the dyes. And with that, you can not only crimp Ultra Pro, but every hose end that is crimpable in Earl's. $3,800, you get a machine, a die, no happy ending. I mean, that seems expensive. <laughs> it is a little bit, but it makes up for itself. Okay. But if, if you're freaking out about the cost of that, if you're not, they do have hoses and fittings that you can just thread together with two of these. $100 wrenches. Well, actually they're 50 a piece, but you're gonna need two of them, so. All right, how's it work? All right, so before, so once you, get, once you get it, you'll unbox it, you'll set it up, but before you can print or you can crimp a hose, you'll need to consult our instructions here. So these basically tell you um, the hose that you're working with. It has a part number. Right now we're working with 69002 ERL, which is a stainless steel braided hose. It tells you the die number that you need, which is a 34 mil, the setting on the mic, which is 3.5, and then the final crimp OD. So once we crimp the hose, we'll get out a set of calipers and we'll measure it to make sure we're within the range. Okay. Um, so so um, you can visually check this afterwards to go, all right, I've crimped it properly. Correct. And if you want to pressure test it after, you can use the D016 ERL to make sure that there are no leaks in it. And if you're wondering how to pressure test a hose like this, you can go to YouTube, look for Holly Performance's channel. They have a video of how to work this. It's actually pretty cool looking. All right, let's get started on this. So we've got our 34 millimeter die. What we'll do is we'll just put it in the machine, the bottom right here, and get our side. Next step is you take your hose, you'll snake it in from the top. Come down like so. Make sure that this is nice and flush in the bottom and that it's not crooked or anything because you will break a die if we're not careful. So what you'll do is you'll kind of line it up right there and hold it. You'll take this, slide it in from the top and let it drop on the bottom here. I feel like for 3,800 bucks, my die shouldn't break. Well, if you're not careful with it, the power of the machine will make it snap. <clears throat> so then you'll get all that snugged in there. You'll take this and you'll slap, slip it in. If you look up here, there's a chamfered area. You'll take it and you'll slide it in there like so. Make sure that it is clear as the whole assembly. Next step, what we'll do is we'll adjust our mic. So right now we're at three millimeters here and we'll turn it to 3.5, like so. So <clears throat> our next step is you wanna take, you wanna look down here and check the top of your, your uh, collar here and make sure it is flush with the top of this die. Because if it's too, hard, too high up, what's going to happen is you're not going to get proper crimp. And if it's too low, it'll damage your hose end. So you want to make sure it's flush with the top. 
And then once you got everything nicely centered, all you'll do is you'll take this button. I just like to hold it down here to make sure nothing goes wrong. And you just press the button. And that's all there is to it. That was too easy. Well, for 30, 100 bucks, it should be. Yeah, I was gonna say, if you're wondering why we're not filming in my garage this episode, it's because I can't afford that tool. I spent everything on the boat. So, luckily you guys are nice enough to have me here so we can just do this. And well, it's our pleasure. Save a few bucks. Oh, there it is. <clears throat> You've crimped it, friend. And now you're going to measure it. And the window of whether you screw this or not is four thousandths of an inch. So you're looking for 1.513 to 1.517 inches OD. Yes, sir. So when you do measure it, what you want to do is you'll take your calipers and you'll measure it right about there. And you want to measure about three different spots. When you measure, you want to measure on the flats here. You don't want to measure on the raised points because I'll give you an incorrect uh, measurement. So what we'll do is we'll measure here and we'll kind of rotate it, measure there. And we'll do one more and measure at the end. And then once we are within our number, which we are, and then you know your hose is good to go. Cool. At this point, we can uh, pressure test it and make sure there's no leaks. When you measure that and it's not correct, say you're at 1.52 inches. So if you're a little large, you'll put it back in your crimper and you'll readjust your mic here and you'll just recrimp it. Okay, so that's a stop. It's setting the depth of the machine right. when it, okay. Yeah, so when it's coming, when you, when you push it down, when you pull it up, it'll allow it to crimp more when you go down with it it'll allow it to crimp less ah, right. cool so if you're a little big recrimp it if you're too small let's say we're we are at 1.45 that's when you get into a zone where you might not want to use the hose because what happens at that point you're actually deforming the inside barb and if you deform it too much you cause the aluminum to crack and cause a leak and then you've got to go buy more dash 20 hose yes Racing's expensive, but think of all the weight you're going to save with that. Well, you know, you're lighter and it looks nicer. It does. This is a beautiful hose. Do you want to go put it on now? Sound like you want to take it home with you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's go install it. So, do you lube up your hose when you install it? You gotta pull is that what's going to happen now? Yeah, so. <laughs> you hold it. I'll be over here. So a little tip is um, to help the hose seal better. On the 37 degree flare seal, but to help the hose seal just a little bit better, mm -hmm. put just a little oil right there on the flare. Just one drop, that's all it does. A dab will do it, that's all we need. Put a little there and on the other side, that's all we need, just a little bit. So, could you I'll not, let you do the could you not smile when you do that? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All the way. Close. There you go. This is the part where I cross thread a Don't do that. two hundred dollar hose and fitting combo. <laughs> <laughs> well I bought enough fittings and hose to make another one. So we have Ultra Pro doing the dry sump system, but you told me there's three or four other hoses back here, right? So what do we have for turbo oil drains? We've got water from the jet pump to the motor. Mm -hmm. You've got another one here for the oil feed for the turbos. What is all of this? So even though the Ultra Pro hose is as, un as a universal hose that we can get, where it handles different fluids, um, every hose in the Earl's line does a certain job the best. Okay. Uh, the reason, so what we did right here, is we use ultra flex smooth bore on your all your oiling system okay. and the reason why we did that was when oil is you know the topic a lot of people like flow and you want the maximum amount of flow for all your oiling systems the okay. ultra flex is a smooth bore core ptfe hose okay now the difference between it and ultra pro is that ultra pro is ribbed to flex more. Okay. This one is not, it's smooth bore, so it does not flex nowhere near as much. But the oil will want to flow through this easier. Correct. Okay, which is great because this is the oil drains for the turbos and right. if these don't drain fast enough, then 
we look like we're rolling coal. That's true. Okay. And as cool uh, as that looks, I don't think you want that on your boat. <laughs> no, the rangers tend to frown upon that. Um, so this is what? Speed flex? Is speed seal. Speed seal. Okay. So why are we using speed seal on the oil feed for the turbos? So the speed seal is also a PTFE core hose. Okay. Uh, the only the reason why we're using the speed seal here is because of the smaller size. Your ultra flex is not available in a small size like this. Okay. So we use that with a stainless steel hose end, speed seal hose end. Okay. And do you have anything, because this is all really close to really hot mm -hmm. items here on the turbo system. Do you have anything we can shroud this with to basically keep the oil temperatures in check? Mm -hmm. We actually have a uh, brand called Old, or Flame Guard. Flame guard. flame guard is basically a protective sheathing that goes over the hose. Okay. We offer it in an orange color and black. black so we'll probably do black for yours black. here yeah. to make yeah. it look good. Uh, for the water system, now the water system, even though it looks like Ultraflex, is a different hose. Aluminum hose ends will not work with pure water long term. So we chose Earl Stainless Steel Autofit Marine hose ends and use Performaflex Stainless Steel Braided Neoprene hose. Okay. Since it's going to be in a corrosive environment, we weren't sure whether you're doing a, you know, uh, ocean boat or you know if we didn't we weren't sure what you were doing with it <laughs> hey anytime you're ready to go in the ocean in this thing have fun i'm not going with you <laughs> well you know you never i know you're a daredevil so you might one day i don't know yeah but i'm not <laughs> stupid um we let you do anything you want with it though <laughs> all right so that's the water system that's the oil system for the turbos we haven't talked about the fuel system and i'm assuming we have yet another kind of plumbing there right so that is also ultra fleck or ultra pro but that is the polyester version of Ultra Pro. Which is my favorite because this is the stuff that doesn't rip hair off my knuckles. Nor does it make you bleed when you assemble it. Yes. It's yes. very nice stuff. But that you didn't use on the oil system. So yes. tell me why. Uh, this, basically because it's so close to all of the hot components of the engine. Okay. We didn't want the polyester being that close to the exhaust system. Um, simply because it can't handle that type of temperature. It can handle the fluid and the pressure, however, just not the temperature. We wanted it to be a engine that will last long, so we went with stainless. Oh, I appreciate that, thank no you. No problem. <laughs> we try to think of everything. Uh, all right, so I'm guessing that probably should have gone before the hose was assembled. Right, ideally you'd put this on and then crimp and assemble, you know, assemble your hose and then crimp it. But since we're doing this after the fact, we'll make it work. So we got one that's a little bit larger than what you'd like to use, but we can secure it with zip ties or something. Oh, okay. Since you're a professional at that. Yeah, that, I got good those. I got ones that won't even melt. Ooh. And basically all I do is just slide it on until it goes down past that area down there. This seems familiar. <laughs> it's a little smaller than the one I'm used to working with, but hey, <clears throat> it works. And there it is. Cool. That's all there is to it. And then you can secure it right here and on the bottom to keep it from slipping around while you're right driving. All right. Just 27 more to go and we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think there's really only one more that might be Yeah, we'll grab the other side questionable. as well. Questionable. And the other good thing about this stuff is, I don't know if you noticed, but steel braid and fiberglass just don't get along. Like. If you trailer this any significant amount of distance, the steel braid will just rub right through the fiberglass and suddenly you have a hole in your boat. And that's not good. No. Especially if you're trying to stay afloat. Yeah, not where I'm from. That's oh, frowned upon. Killing two birds with one stone. Okay, you've already showed me how to assemble a crimp fitting with mm -hmm. the world's most expensive tools. Now, teach me. Is there anything different about these thread together fittings versus the other ones I've used before? I'm guessing Make sure the hose isn't kinked and then just mark it somewhere in this area. Right, so um, I'm all about symmetry. So if I were you, I kind of just angle it just the same way as this one, maybe a little bit further down right. to get the, get, you know, make sure the hose isn't tight. You always want a little bit of slack in between your hoses. Um, basically, if you have your hose too tight, especially on poly, and the vibration can make it, you know, can damage the hose. Okay. So we always like a little bit of slack. But so what you'll do is you'll have it right about here. And when you measure to cut, you'll cut right there is where your hose will need to stay. Right where that flange is? Right. Okay. So you'll just make a little mark and that way we'll know where to put our tape. 
But the main difference between this type is the assembly process is completely different than your traditional hose end. It is. Yes, sir, but we'll show you how to do that one. All right. <clears throat> Learning stuff. That's right. It's like we're back in school without the gross lunch. So now we've seen the way we do the crimp ultra pro. Yeah. This is the polyester hose, but these are the reusable or twist on hose ends. Okay. So I like that. I can screw that up and do it again. That's right. Okay. Not too many times though. So the difference between this hose end and your traditional hose ends that use a rubber is this one has three different components. You have a socket an olive and then the hose end itself. Your typical hose end does not have the olive portion. It just has these two. Right. And the way it seals is by compressing that rubber. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Right. So Almost this, every time. <laughs> this one seals a little bit differently. What this does is once we cut this, I'll kind of show you the inner workings of it, but it takes those inside ribs and compresses them and that's how it seals. Okay. So it's not, a, it's not a, a seal or crush this way, but that way. So it's gripping the inside of the hose, not necessarily right. the outside. Yes. Okay. So, so when you're doing the polyester hose, you don't want to use a tape with adhesive on it okay. because what happens when you peel it off, all that braid is going to fray open. Oh, because it's going to stick to the tape. Right. And then you're going to have a whole new headache on your hands. So what we like to do is we use plumber's tape or PTFE tape. And what you'll do is we've marked it where we want to cut it already. And we'll take it and we'll just roll it around there. Make sure you have a nice tight um, wrap there. You do about two or three revolutions. Once you get to this point, before we use the cutoff wheel here, now we're actually going to use a razor blade. Uh, most people are used to seeing something like this. Yeah, I was saying, these are cool. Right. You don't want to use these on this type of hose. Okay. So what happens is whenever you're cutting the hose, it comes down and normally you cut it and the rubber kind of gets pinched, but it's rubber so it just brings back where it was. Mm -hmm. This, you actually damage the inside of the hose and cause a leak. So you don't want to use this, nor do you want to use scissors to cut the hose. What we like to use is we use a razor blade and we'll just take it and we'll mark where we want to go. So what we'll do is we'll go in, go in from the top and rotate around. We'll come in through there and just go right through. Sometimes you'll have a little bit hanging off. That's okay. All you do is grab some scissors and you just snip it off right there. And that's all there is to it. You're right. I literally, when you said, oh, I'm going to show you, you've never done one like this before. I literally thought this was another excuse for you to just show me yet another Earl's product. <laughs> but oh. no, if you had not told me how to do that, I would have used the wrong tools. I would have been like, yeah, use these bitchin' Earl's cutters because these are the bomb and I would have wrecked it. Well, see, this hose line is all about educating the public because typically what this is, is it's usually only been for race only applications. Only race teams or, you know, high end customers have only had access to this, but we've taken it and we're giving it to the public. So it, it, the education on it is, is the key to success okay. on this. So what we do is once you get your hose in inside, you'll have the instruction sheet. This goes over how to cut it and how to do everything. Basically all the stuff I'm explaining to you here. <clears throat> so once we've got there, what we'll do now is you take your, your socket here and you put your socket on first and you just kind of do that, pull it down. You pull the outer braid down, exposing the inner liner. Now this inner line is what I was talking about. So if you cut it with a chop saw like that, it pinches it and it can actually crack these ends right here and that's where you can form a leak. Okay. So that's why you want to avoid using those. The razor blade won't do that, so you avoid that issue. But once you push that socket back and you pull the outer braid off, you get that inner liner. Next step, what you do is you take your olive. If you look in here, your olive, it's threaded and the hose is also threaded as well, itself. So what you'll do is I like to kind of back it off till I feel it kind of seat in there and you just take it and you just twist it. And once, sometimes it'll pop off like that. You just line it back up and you go down with it. Once you can't get it with your hands anymore, you just grab some pliers. You don't want to, you don't want to crush it. You just kind of want to hold it with the pliers okay. and rotate. <clears throat> what you do is you'll just keep rotating it until a little bit of the hose is exposed. So you don't want to take this and run it all the way down here. You want to expose about a 16th of an inch. Okay. Maybe a little bit more if your hose cut is a little bad, but you don't want to do too much. So once you get to this point, you get your razor blade back out and you'll take this and you'll cut it flush with the olive. Okay. So a nice flush cut. Once you get to this point, you'll take your thread tape off and since we've already assembled one side of the hose, you'll pull that braid tight, 
because in this hose line, all of the strength is in that braid. So if we disassemble this hose and we got all this going on, what's gonna happen is you're gonna create a weak point in this area and this area. Oh, the inside hose can swell in there. Right, so it'll swell, you got weak points there, and that's where it's gonna fail. Okay. So if you have a tight, straight braid, like we've got here, what you do is you I just kind of pull it from the bottom, pull a socket down there, and just pull it from the bottom, and then go like that. We won't have any failure points. So once you pull the socket forward, you want to look in there and make sure there's no braid sticking out in the threads. Mm -hmm. So now, since we're good there, we'll take our hose in, put it in the vise like so, and tighten that up, and there it is. So pull a little oil on your barb there, and then you take this. And I just kind of like to roll it around to make sure that everything seats properly and you push it and turn it. And it'll seat and you just twist it on. Once you get to a certain point, you grab a wrench and you just rotate it. Once you're turning it, you'll kind of feel the resistance to turn go up a little bit. Um, you're not, you're not cross turning or anything. All you're doing at this point right now is you're taking those ribs and you're compressing them. Okay. So once you get towards the end, you'll feel like it hard. That's when you're actually sealing the hose. And you just go all the way down until it stops. And then you got yourself a hose. Now there is a video on uh, Holly's YouTube page and on website on how to do all this. So in case you forget, you can always revisit it. So if you're crazy like me, can you back this off just to line up the notches or will it leak? You could, but that will cause an issue. Okay. I wouldn't. All right, I won't then. I won't. I trust you. Don't do it. Now, sometimes if you're working with the bigger sizes, like 12, 16, and 20, you'll get to a point to where you're putting a lot of force into it, and the socket might not butt all the way up against there. Okay, but so, it's tight. It's good. Right. I mean, if you're, you know, if you're putting a lot of force into it, it's good. You don't have to necessarily butt it up 100%. I feel like this isn't necessarily easier to assemble than some of the other ones that I've done without the collet in there. Mm -hmm but I'm more confident in this than those. Cause I've had those other ones where you're cranking on it and the hose is spinning inside of the nut yeah. and you throw it on the motor and it leaks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it, if you do it the correct way, you'll know. Okay. And, that, and you'll know you'll be confident in what you've done. Well, I feel confident. Well, good. Yeah. Well, let's go throw it on the boat then. I think we should. It's not done, but it's getting closer. And I'm thinking springtime. Springtime, come on out. I'll take you for a ride. I'll take you tubing. <laughs> there won't be video of that because there's liability involved, but uh, eventually on Finnegan's Garage, you will see this thing run and maybe Darko in a Speedo. Oh. <laughs> no one wants that. Nobody does want that. Well, that's it for this episode of Finnegan's Garage. I want to thank Holly, Earls, and Darko for all the free plumbing. <laughs> no problem. Could have like put it on a little straighter. <laughs>